the church, we continue to um, dive into the book of Proverbs through the season of Epiphany. And Epiphany, as we remember, is a celebration of the light that came through Jesus at Christmas time in our calendar, continues to grow and burn brighter as we continue to know and grow in him. And we've been diving through, as I said, the book of Proverbs in chapter 16 in particular, um, looking at um, Proverbs. Now, many in the book of Proverbs see these short little sayings as answers to life's riddles. They are short sentences that give us meaning, that give us purpose, that give us passion in how we live. Now, Proverbs, as defined by the Bible Knowledge Commentary, translates the Hebrew word proverb from the Hebrew word masal. Now, the word masal, as a proverb, speaks about to be compared with or to be like, sort of like an object lesson or a children's lesson on one to another. And it's really speak from God speaking through a lot of which were, were through Solomon to the people of Israel, but also to us today. An object lesson of a short soundbite, if you will, of, of how we are called to know this God and to live for this God. There are short sayings of wisdom from God for our everyday living. They're not a rule book on how to live for God, but they're more like a roadmap of where to live with God, with God at the center of our hearts, rather than dictating how we live it out. It's who we live it with. So this morning, I want to read just a couple of verses near the end of the book, and next week we're going to finish with the last verse. But in chapter 16... I'm going to read verses 31 and 32. Where am I there? there? Gray hair is a crown of splendor. It is attained in the way of righteousness. Better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. This is the word of the Lord for us this morning. Let's pray and ask God His blessing on our teaching today. Holy God, we give you thanks and we give you praise that you continue to speak words of truth today in 2021 even though they were originally spoken to people and written down thousands of years ago, they remain true. But they remain true more about who you are than about how we're to respond to you. We pray that your spirit would come into our midst today, in-house or online, and and just gently nudge us back to a, a fear for you to teach us to show us, to reveal to us yourself. And in light of that, we we see how we're to respond in worship, but also in word and deed. Empower us, encourage us, comfort us, but also challenge us to move beyond our place of comfort into a place of holiness with you, of honor and dignity, value and worth that you made us to be. We pray this in your holy name. Amen. Now, the text today is short and sweet, but maybe not so sweet after all. It speaks of those with gray hair, those who are aged, middle-aged perhaps, or older, having a crown with splendor. But the reality is, in 2021, this idea of gray hair people being honored is a little displaced, I think. There are many people in this world who shriek, literally shriek, when that first gray hair appears in their head, like it wasn't there yesterday, but it's there today. And then they spend dollars and decades trying to either hide it with dye or coloring or shaving it or whatever, or just covering it up in some way to hide that look of aging that's come upon us. Because culture, in some ways, displaces the aged of how you lived into some thing in the past, some box, that's how it used to be, but we've moved on. And culture in some ways truthfully displaces aged people into separate homes of retirement or nursing. And we're recognizing some of the benefits and the lack of as COVID-19 has ravaged some of those homes. We're confused a little bit about what do we do with aged people or people who were aging. What do we do with gray hairs in our culture, in our mind? Max Lucado tells a story of a department store. 
And this, was, this story was told before barcodes were in the grocery stores or in the, in the department store. So on each item, there was this little tag with a number on it. Whether it was a dollar or a thousand dollars, it didn't matter. Each, each item had a tag on it. And one night, Max Lucado writes in his story, thieves came into the store and stole nothing. But what they did was they unattached each tag from one object and put it onto the next. So something like a post-it note was switched with a television set and now was $1,000. Or perhaps the socks were switched with the price of fridges. Expensive jewelry tag was switched with a pencil case. And bedroom sets, you know, those dressers and those drawers, well, that was switched with light bulbs. So when people came into the store the next day to buy things, they were paying $1.99 for an entire bedroom set and paying thousands of dollars for a pair of socks. The thing was, is that they went on for hours before people figured out that this was wrong. The confusion of the value and the worth of the items got lost on people. They just did what they were, thought they were supposed to do. The value of the items had become confusing and chaotic, and no one was sure what was worth anything anymore. And I think our culture, particularly in COVID-19, has come to be aware that Things that we valued at one point highly aren't as valuable anymore, and vice versa. In our world today, many feel the same sense of confusion. What is seen as valuable is often seen as now worthless, and others that were insignificant now become life changers. We're learning from home. We're working from home. We're not driving out as much as we were, and we can't see family or friends except through tablets. And we're getting frustrated because we don't know What's worthwhile anymore? What's honorable? What's right? What's true? To say that culture changes is like we change clothes. There's an old cultural proverb, the clothes make the man. Now perhaps a better analogy might be the hat defines or makes the man. Our identity or our hat shifts sometimes. Sometimes we are seen or we see ourselves as an athlete. And my Raptors need as much help as they can get right now. Or perhaps to others you're seen more as the, the class clown. A time for comedy, perhaps. And you feel like you need to be that person right now. Or perhaps you're seen more in a cultural way. And yes, you still have a month to go before you get your Kiss Me, I'm Irish stuff out there. St. Patrick's Day is in just over a month. Or perhaps... You just want to look good. Now, this hat can go two ways. When I first bought it, someone said, you look like your old man. I said, yes, but Samuel L. Jackson made it really cool back in the early 2000s to, you know, hang around like this. Now, this hat's taken a bit of a beating, and I was given another hat by a friend who thought I would look cool in a fedora. And perhaps I do, perhaps I don't. But some people just keep switching a hat to find out what identity they are or who's going to like them for who they are or what they are. But truthfully, some people get tired of putting those hats on. And so what they end up doing is hiding. They just put on their toque on a good day like today, put on the neck warmer, and just hide as best as they can. But the thing is, you're never known because you're never shown. It's hard to find worth in this world when you can't see out and they can't see in. It's hard to honor each other when we can't see each other. It's hard to honor God when we can't see Him in this world. It feels like things are worthless, dishonored. Where do we find value in our life? Purpose, passion, power. Gray hair doesn't seem to have any meaning or benefit to us whatsoever. But in this world, even in this COVID-19 world, God still is. Psalm 139 declares the knowledge of God to us. 
He knows when we sit, when we stand. He knows before a word is on our lips, it's in our heart, in our head, and he knows it. He knows whether we're in the farthest of the east or the farthest of the west, the ups or the downs. He knows us intimately. He sees us through our disguises. He sees us through our hiddenness. He sees us as he made us to be, the image of God. He sees us as we were before we were confused and switched and devalued and disguised. He sees us as we are still called and meant to be. In a world uncertain of who it is and how to live it out, God speaks a certainty to us. A certainty that he is the right way, the right truth, the right life. He speaks of righteousness. Righteousness is a big word that just simply means the right way of doing things at the right time, in the right reason. And God is righteous. Psalm 89, verse 14 speaks of how righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. And God wants that righteousness, that understanding of value and worth from him, to be seen by creation. Psalm 97, verse 6, The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the peoples see his glory. Or Psalm 98, verse 2, The Lord has made his salvation known and revealed his righteousness to the nations. This God of value and worth and honor is making himself known. And mostly through his Son, Jesus Christ. For as much as we can see God in creation, as much as we can see God in Scripture that points to Jesus. 1 John 2, verse 1 speaks, my dear children, I write this so you will not sin, but if, I, if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is the atoning sacrifice for our sins, and not only for ours, but for the sins of the whole world. God isn't just righteous as a person. He also does righteousness in how he lived. Jesus Christ came to this earth, walked amongst us, lived amongst the brokenness and the pain and the suffering of the world, and did not add to it, but lived a life of righteousness, teaching of kingdom, teaching of righteousness, teaching, teaching of truth, of justice, of love, of grace, and then took all of that teaching to, to the cross, where that separation that we have with God by our sin, by our unrighteousness, by our dishonor absolved all of that by his death on the cross and then rose again that the power over death would also be given to us the power of full and abundant life would be honor to us his honor would be given to us because the amazing life and death and resurrection of jesus changes us and challenges us Sorry, transforms us from creatures that had no value or a mixed up value, from creatures that had too many hats to creatures that have his image and his image alone. To ones that were adopted into his family in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, which you see, God made him who had, be, who had no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness, the value, the honor of God. We become valuable we become honorable, we become splendor because of him. In fact, if we were to put on a hat, it speaks of the crown of splendor, the crown of righteousness. Now, it's going to be one that looks a little less chintzy than this. I get that. But God calls us into a life of righteousness with him that is signified by a crown in 2 Timothy 4.8. Now there is, there is in store for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will award to me on that day. And not only to me, but all who have longed for his appearing. We become honored to be God's children because of his grace, his life, his death, and resurrection for us. Let me just do it this way. Because this outweighs all of this. We want to wear this hat, not these. 
God calls us to this, not this confusion, not this worthlessness. We're called to pursue righteousness, and in that we find honor, Proverbs 20:21. 20, and verse 32 talks about how we can begin some of that righteous living by being patient and self-controlled, words that would be echoed by Paul in Galatians 5.21, where the fruit of the Spirit are unpacked. Words that reflect the honor that we've been given and they reflect the honor that we're called to give out to those around us. Because we live in a world that is broken, shamed, disrespected, dishonored, longing for the honor that they were made to be by God himself. And they don't know that it exists unless we tell them, unless we show them the honor, the dignity, and the value and worth. Regardless of our walk in life. I saw a Facebook post from a friend of mine yesterday who's in his 40s, diagnosed with ALS, two years. He's a singer, married to a fabulous worship leader as well. He's walking with it through bravery, admittedly, but dignity and value and worth will diminish for him because that's what ALS does. ALS, Lou Gehrig syndrome, takes away your dignity in many ways. But God continues to pour his dignity into Phil, my friend. He continues to pour it into his family and his friends as he lives out that honor and dignity to those around him. Because honor, by definition, is something that is esteemed or respected or valued. It's an understanding of something lavish or expensive within it. Something important. We honor things in our lives that are important to us. But honor, so it... Proverbs 16, 31 reminds us that God is to be honored for creation and salvation and reminds us that God offers us the crown of salvation. We are honored by this crown, by this God. But honor has a second half of the definition. It's something that's how it's lived correctly according to the right standards or conduct. It's fulfilling, basically, obligations and responsibilities of your identity. You're honored as a person. You're honorable how you live that out. Gray hair becomes a crown of splendor or glory or honor, but only through righteous living. Being old doesn't make you righteous. Being old means you've been able to be righteous longer if you choose to live righteously, if you choose to accept the righteous one into your heart, into your life. Gray hair is a sign of splendor if the righteousness of God shines through. I'm going to show you a picture that was taken several years ago. I'm going to explain my bitterness in a second. So this is my family at, my, at our wedding, my, my wife and I's wedding. Now, you can see on the bottom right of the screen there, that's my dad. Now, he doesn't have much hair. He had a widow's peak quite early in his life, but he's got black hair. He didn't have much gray hair, but he lost a lot of it. Now, my mother, who began early in her life was a, was a dark-haired woman, but had gray hair probably as soon as she had me. Fair enough. Now, out of the family tree, though, I look at this and I went, how did my brother, my younger brother, my baby brother, end up with the full head of hair and all black? Whereas I got the no hair look and the gray hair look. I complained to my father several times that I was being ripped off in the genetic tree. He smiled and laughed. And my mother, in her quippy way, sort of went, Gray hair is spiritual wisdom. The reality was is that their righteousness didn't come through his lack of hair or her gray hair. It came through how they lived their lives for God. Their legacy, their honor didn't come from how they looked on the outside. It's how they lived on the inside. Honor comes from wisdom as we reflect on Honoring our God, our Creator, our Redeemer, and our Sustainer. And honoring those around us as He has made us to love them. And truthfully, even at times, honoring ourselves as God's children, holy and dearly loved.
we began our journey with a need to be hungry for God in this world. To need to see what God is doing and saying to us. And then we moved into this honesty of who we really are before Him, which led us to a place of humility that we are before, before Him and below Him and we serve Him and honor Him. And God offers us help to become honored as His children, holy and dearly loved, heirs to the kingdom, crowns of righteousness, by His grace, and for His glory. And that gives us hope, which is next week, when we serve communion and we reflect on Christ and we look forward to the coming of Easter. In God's name, amen.